the fitness industry is completely dysfunctional. <laughs> Have you ever wondered why it's so difficult for personal trainers to earn a decent living when we make such a huge positive impact on people's lives? This is Fit Pro Lifestyle with Gary Robinson, helping you create a fitness career with a lifestyle to match. Hi, it's Gary Robinson here. Welcome to the first episode of the Fit Pro Lifestyle podcast. You're about to learn a bunch of insider secrets that will fast track your career as a fitness professional. So listen carefully and you'll discover some uncommon strategies that will empower you to help a lot more people become fit and healthy. And at the same time, you'll be able to forge a rewarding lifestyle that allows you to do what you love every day. Now, I joined the fitness industry in 2005 after retiring from a pretty successful career in technology and startups that lasted 15 years. Since then, I've worked as a snowboard instructor, a personal trainer, I've started several boot camps and outdoor fitness groups, I've bought and sold a fitness franchise, and I currently work as a CrossFit coach and a strong first kettlebell instructor. Now, I made a lot of money working in the tech and finance sector, but it took me years to figure out how to do the same in the fitness business. And now that I've cracked it, I want to share these strategies so you can go out there and start changing as many lives as possible. But before I do, I need to tell you something that you probably don't want to hear. However, it's essential to understand if you want to be successful as a fitness professional, and it's this. The fitness industry is completely dysfunctional. <laughs> Have you ever wondered why it's so difficult for personal trainers to earn a decent living when we make such a huge positive impact on people's lives? Well, there are a few things broken with the fitness industry right now, and partly because it's an immature industry, things will get better. But right now, there are things like the fact gyms and health clubs just don't work. They don't work for their customers, they don't work for their employees, and they certainly don't work for personal trainers who must pay rent to work there. Fitness education courses are designed to prepare you for a career in one of these gyms or health clubs. Now, this is clearly not very helpful, especially when the average personal trainer working in a gym doesn't even make it to the end of their first 12-month contract. And apart from that, personal training courses completely disregard what the military know about physical training. See, for hundreds of years, armies have been made up of extremely fit and strong people, and the armies have been training huge groups of people at one time to get them that way. Why aren't their training methods being taught on PT certifications today? Overall, I think there are just a shortage of affordable resources that would help micro-fitness business owners succeed. In other words, self-employed personal trainers and fitness instructors like you and me. Now, you can take advantage of this situation, now that you know what you're dealing with. See, things are changing. People don't trust big gyms and health clubs anymore, and membership numbers are plummeting. Customers are abandoning them for more relevant, more effective, and more fun alternatives that they can do with their friends. Days are certainly numbered for gym-based personal trainers and group exercise instructors. The old guard fitness industry leaders, those large health club owners and their shareholders, they're desperately scrambling to hang on. They want to preserve the lucrative status quo for themselves, but they're losing out. They're losing out to a new breed of fitness industry leader, local, knowledgeable fitness professionals like you, who are people-oriented, passionate, and care deeply about what they do. So if you are not already running your own outdoor fitness business or group personal training sessions, then you're missing out on a golden opportunity to make a huge difference to the health of your friends, your neighbors, and the people in your community. It's also possible to make a very good full-time income by running an outdoor personal training business, even if you only do it in your spare time. The Fit Pro Lifestyle podcast is all about how to cut through all the BS and carve out a successful career in this industry. Now is the best time to go out and create a successful and profitable group fitness business of your own. So what will the coming years hold for personal trainers? I predict that we will see the fitness industry continue to fragment and that people will abandon the large gyms and big box health clubs. They already are. They're going to migrate to boutique local fitness facilities run by well-educated and enthusiastic fitness professionals. These local and specialized fitness facilities are starting to serve the needs of their clients far better than the one-size-fits-no-one model that the gyms and health clubs have been dishing up for years. Our main streets have studios dedicated to yoga and Pilates, there's CrossFit affiliates, 24-hour gyms, kettlebell and TRX gyms, and physiotherapists are even running group re prehab sessions from their treatment rooms. Small group training is going to replace one-to-one -one personal training, and those personal trainers will find it more and more difficult to earn a living from their gym contracts. 
Oh, and group personal training, fitness camps, and fitness boot camps are going to become more and more popular. And I'll explain why, because there's something emerging right now that'll help them. Now, here are some tips that will help you thrive in the fitness industry in the coming years. First, if you're still swapping time for money in a gym or health club, or if you're just starting your fitness career, you absolutely must start your own group training program. This is the single fastest way to earn more money and serve more people while building a solid asset for yourself and your family for years to come. Joining an online community of outdoor personal trainers, such as the one I run at kaizenoutdoorfitness.com, That'll help you get up and running for a very modest investment and you'll learn all the shortcuts to take and mistakes to avoid in order to fast track your success in a short space of time. Next, decide who exactly who your clients are and create a training program just for them. For example, you might offer babysitting for mums while they train or run a mid-morning seniors group and arrange social events for them. My friend Dawn organises fitness adventure holidays and targets people in her town who love to travel and try new things. Her fitness camps are always packed because of this. So the more specific you are, the cheaper and easier it is to target people with your marketing efforts. Next tip is if you love hardcore training, invest in a CrossFit affiliate and structure your training program in line with CrossFit's GPP prescription for high intensity, varied and functional workouts. Why? because it's relatively cheap and the CrossFit marketing machine will send you hundreds of qualified leads. You don't need a bricks and mortar facility, just continue to run your programs outdoors and invest in some heavy sandbags to introduce your clients to lifting weight instead of barbell lifting. Next tip is to continue to invest time and money in your education. It's ridiculously easy to become a qualified personal trainer today, but that qualification alone is almost worthless. PT certifications do not teach you how to train groups of people. As soon as you get qualified, that's when the real learning begins. You should specialize in an area of fitness that interests you most and become the best trainer in town for that particular niche. Having this point of difference enables you to stand out from the crowd and attract exactly the type of clients you really want to help. Now, there is a further opportunity emerging for fitness professionals who are willing to abandon the one-on-one personal training model and start their own outdoor training group. And that is to set yourself up as a specialized training center for mud runs and obstacle races. To see why this is, let's retrace the evolution of civilian boot camps over the past 10 years or so in order to take stock of where we are today and try and predict what the future is going to be. So when I started in the fitness industry around 2005, large gyms were offering six week summer boot camps. They were new and very easy to sell to a captive audience of health club members desperate to try something new. And the tough military recruit style training was extremely effective, so it had wide appeal. It was common to see groups of 30 to 40 or more people led by just one or two trainers. So that led around about 2006 to 2009, it led to dedicated bootcamp businesses and franchises began popping up to cater for the new demand. These groups would operate all year round and offer timetables of sessions that clients could choose from. So with more options, group sizes were smaller, perhaps 10 to 20 people, but the essence of tough team training continued to appeal to both males and females. And really this was the heyday for fitness boot camps. They were accessible and fun, they delivered great results for clients and they were very profitable for personal trainers running them. And then around 2009 to 2013, 14, CrossFit emerged as a legitimate group exercise prescription. It's constantly varied program based on functional exercises done at high intensity, popularized general physical preparedness or GPP, and it delivers exceptional results. With an outstanding education program and emphasis on coaching rather than training, CrossFit bridges the gap perfectly between one-on-one personal training and group exercise. This competitive sporting nature appeals to males and as interest in CrossFit increases, bootcamp numbers decreased and group outdoor personal training became more fashionable. The emphasis shifted from tough team training in a large group to exercising with friends in a more intimate and social community. Naturally this appealed to ladies and the balance shifted towards girls only fitness groups which is another example of industry fragmentation. Tough training pretty much disappeared from bootcamps along with the impressive results that goes with it sadly. So today, around about 2015 as I record this, the original concept of the civilian boot camp, which was tough team training 
it's almost been forgotten. Many outdoor fitness groups are only offered part-time and they're starting to lose their general appeal in the same way that big box gyms and health clubs have. Now, poor quality programming and mediocre delivery is the problem. See, military style general physical preparedness has been thrown out and an odious low intensity aerobic bias has crept in. This could destroy the credibility of outdoor fitness groups for many outdoor training enthusiasts. And just as CrossFit heralds hard exercise for hard people, group outdoor personal training is beginning to be perceived as soft exercise for soft people. I'm just being honest here uh, and I see this happening all the time. So what can we learn from it? Well, today boot camps may be in danger of losing their mass appeal, but they're still the most viable way for fitness professionals to earn a living. Intensity is vital to, for delivering results, and not necessarily high intensity, but appropriate intensity. We've got to take back tough in order to restore wider appeal. This overemphasis on low intensity drills overloads the aerobic energy system, and sadly, the longer term result of this training style is skinny fat and weak clients, since we need fat to fuel the aerobic activity. That's quite the opposite of what most people want. That's why programming is extremely important. Neglecting to prepare a well-balanced program always leads to fitness plateaus. And if you have a problem retaining clients beyond three to six months, the most likely reason is that your program is not delivering sustained results. CrossFit raised the bar when it comes to delivering quality training. Group trainers today must become more than just cheerleaders or drill sergeants. We've got to educate ourselves to become fitness coaches. Now, I like what the Spartan SGS program says about this. They say, being a coach is different from being a trainer. A coach may do some of the same activities as a trainer, but takes it one step further and acts as a guiding light to help their clients attain a better life beyond just fitness. So I think there are actually two huge opportunities for outdoor fitness groups and civilian boot camps to regain their mass appeal and become even more popular than they were during the 2006 to 2009 heyday. The first is the emerging trend for large scale organized mud runs such as Tough Mudder and Spartan. Group outdoor trainers are ideally positioned to help this rising army of mud runners prepare properly for the first and subsequent adventure races. And the second, slightly ironic opportunity comes from the maturity of CrossFit. Now CrossFit have done really, really well the sport is clearly training towards power, strength, and ATP energy system based events. In fact, the modern day CrossFit Games is more like a strongman event than a test of overall fitness. But CrossFit doesn't hold the mass appeal that mud runs and adventure races do. Endurance athletes, they've long since turned their backs on the sport, and its cult status is quite off putting and even intimidating to some. So, what does the future hold for civilian boot camps? Well, Tough Mudder and Spartan events are going to bring males and endurance athletes flooding back to outdoor fitness groups in droves. But this can only happen if we as outdoor personal trainers and bootcamp instructors raise our game. We've got to strive to become coaches rather than trainers and to develop programs that pay attention to the full spectrum of general physical preparedness. It's time to take back tough and deliver training and an intensity that gets results. It's also about time we recaptured the camaraderie and team training element of the original civilian boot camp and start to deliver programs that are relevant to our clients' fitness goals once again. So this concept of the Adventure Race Training Center, there's an army of mud run loving clients out there crying out for us to raise our game, stand up and get tough. And as we've known for centuries, boot camps are the way to train armies. So some action steps from this, the first Fit Pro Lifestyle podcast. Uh, I'm just going to summarize. Starting your own fitness group is essential for, for a successful career as a fitness trainer. It's the most leveraged way to earn a full time income working part time hours, and you can be up and running quickly and cheaply. Specialists get paid more. Who do you want to train? What problem are you solving for that particular person? The more specific you can be, the better it will be for attracting the better and cheaper and quicker it'll be for attracting more clients. You should consider investing in a CrossFit affiliation. The CrossFit marketing machine can send you hundreds of qualified leads. And if CrossFit doesn't appeal to you, why not set yourself up as a specialized adventure race training center for mud runs and obstacle races, and then offer quality coaching and programming for that. But overall, I think you just got to raise your game. 
Let's become coaches, not just cheerleaders. Let's invest in, in ourselves and stand for something. Now you can start by visiting fitprolifestyle.com and download all the free resources, strategies, and fitness career building ideas I've posted there. If you like this podcast, uh, please let me know, leave a review on iTunes and share it with all the other trainers you know so we can build a better fitness industry for everyone. I'll see you next time. Discover how to create a fitness career with a lifestyle to match. Check out fitprolifestyle.com.